Welcome back to the All-Ireland Live series with Benetti Menswear as we build up to the huge All-Ireland final clash of Mayo and Tyrone. I'm Shane Stapleton of Our Game and uh, with me today is David Brady. We're going to build up to this All-Ireland final clash. A reminder, if you do want to win one of these retro GA jerseys behind us from orgoretro.com, please do like, comment, share and use the hashtag Benetti's Menswear and uh, we'll enter the competition and pick a winner of one of those jerseys. David, we're heading into the All-Ireland final week. Are you excited about it? I know you've been here before, but uh, the excitement surely is still there. Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And, you know, I always say, does it get better or does it get worse as regards nerves? Um, from my perspective as a player, cool, calm, collected, you're just going, you had a job, you're in the, the middle of it, uh, focused as an individual supporter, as a pundit, um, probably a bag of nerves at times, um, giddy, don't sleep. Definitely don't sleep the night before the game. My wife thinks, this is here it goes, now is this the next four or five days or next 24 hours before in our Ireland? Um, yeah, and it's, again, it's about where the people outside of the two teams can enjoy it. It's very hard to enjoy um, an our Ireland build-up, but there is, there is uh, there's some great moments, and it is, it's unique. We're going to have two new unique winners, and, uh, or one unique winner. And uh, it's, it's, you know, I just... It's, it's the stuff dreams are made of because you don't know when you're going to get to this stage next. You don't know when you're going to be in the next All Ireland final. Well, it has been 70 years. That's how long back the, the famine stretches at this stage. Can you give us a, an appreciation of the journey that Mayo fans, supporters, players like yourself went through? You know, there's the All Ireland finals from '89 up until last year. That's 10 defeats. W what is that like for Mayo people and for yourself personally? Brilliant. So oh. it is. <laughs> it's brilliant. Brilliant torture. I, I, brilliant. It's not torture. Um, and people going, oh, poor Leo, this and poor man says, the journey that we've been on, 10 defeats, is that what it is? Plus two replays, are we including that? Maybe you can count them as 12. Um, has been the journey of a lifetime. Um, I'll never forget as a 13, 14 year old watching the Mayo team coming home from the All Ireland defeat in 89, uh, on top of a trailer coming into Banana at the train station, and probably Esparta says, you know what? I want to be there. I want to do that. And it did. It gave me something to believe in. And look at you look at some of the, 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 the sports psychology books is that if people have something to aim towards and they have a, a, a goal and the goal is representative of what other people are, are people that you can represent with, it, it's very easily done. Uh, and for me, I was looking up at the likes of, of I'd say, Liam McHale up on top of a trailer. And Jesus, I thought he was, he was the bee's knees. No, he is the bee's knees. Mm. But for me, I was going, Jeez, look at him. And six years later, I was playing in Ireland final with him. You know, it, it, it was that, you know, I, 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 uh, and if I didn't have that symbol of light or hope or that beacon to follow, uh, and then we, I hope we lit that beacon in 96 and 97 and 2004 and 2006 when I was playing, um, and then up for all Ireland. Uh, and that's what it is. It's not torture. It's the greatest fun and crack and build up. Yes, there's, there, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to take at times, hard to swallow, but that's um, great. So you, were you able to embrace it as a player, building into those finals? Like they were huge back towards the tail end of the 90s and obviously 04 or 06. Massive. Uh, yeah, you do embrace it. And anyone that says, you know, even the Dublin boys, and I'll be talking to the boys now that'll be retired, like Alan or, or, or Bernard Brogan and... Um, the boy, even the Dublin guys, current, you, they love it. And you embrace it, not externally, but internally. You say, you know what, I have the greatest opportunity of a lifetime coming up um, for this all Ireland it's Saturday at 5 o'clock. And what an opportunity it is to, 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 uh, to perform in the greatest stage of all. Um, whether it's no people like it was on the tw 19th, was it December last year, to 40 or 50,000, whatever it will be now. But we, we do, you do realise that it's... It's the whole world, from an Irish cultural GA context, the whole world is watching. Do you think that the supporters now, because they've dealt with so many disappointments, you know, yourself as well included in that, do you come into this with a bit more trepidation, you know, like, uh, you know, you've been burnt before, or do you come in with full of hope and expectation, as, as you always did? So you just said there now, do you come in with hope and expectation, as you always do? And that's what we do. And we do, and we don't carry the burden of the past or the scars of the past. Um, because we, 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 we learn from it. We, as supporters, you definitely learn from it to say, you know what, 
it passes. It might it last year passed around February or March and it was hard and we just want a football again in April. Um, but as game, it is life. It's it's not it's not and it, I've always seen it and, and put in by young and old into context on what it is. It's a very, very important of part of our Mayo culture and Mayo GA. But it's not it's not everything. It's not life and death. Um, but the opportunity, our greatest opportunity ever in Mayo to win All Ireland is this one coming up on Saturday. Not the past ten that we lost and two replays and it's what's next. And if it is the case and we don't we're not successful on Saturday, well then we'll get up, um, we'll get dressed and we'll get on with it and we'll we look forward to the future. It'll be very different to last December when there was nobody there. I mean, at times it was it was grim. Dublin playing keep ball at the end. It was it was a tough watch actually. Sorry, you were at it. I was at it as from media perspective, and it was you're going. Oh, it was just sad. It was that lull of an All Ireland final. You know, of the, the lull that was there, but compared to what an All Ireland final is, we've seen it in the last couple of weeks. The semi finals, the hurling final. That people, people are the the the. The most important foundation of, of a game and the supporters and everything else and it just didn't it was nice to have it um, it was nice to have the championship at a very dark period in all our lives from a from a pandemic point of view um, you know October November December it got us through that sludge um, and, and, and kind of that that hard that hard part of life but uh, now that the kind of life is coming back to normal um, and it, 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 is, it is a great opportunity. And I, if, I, if, I, if I look on it, right, I do think that um, the pandemic has helped Mayo. Um, it has given them an opportunity. And that opportunity is to have all the players home at the one time as a unit together, which they never, ever, ever had. And I've seen it in my day and I've heard it and I've been told of what happens now. And well, in my day it was Dublin down to Mayo. It was four hours, four and a bit hours back then. Uh, now it's still the guys meet up at half four at the Spa Hotel in Lucan uh, 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 and you, you're kind of saying to yourself, three hour, you know, two and a half, nearly three hours down on a bus, okay, you can relax, relax you can stretch, uh, you go training, you have your meal, you might have a debrief, you might have some analysis, you're not back on the bus at quarter past ten. Half twelve you get back to Dublin, you're getting up you're getting up at half six the next morning to go into the city or go working. And you're doing that twice a week nearly. And then you might be going down at the weekend. That is That takes its toll and has taken its toll. Uh, and, and cannot but. But we're in the position now, because of COVID, that the vast, vast majority of players are home-based. They're in and around Mayo. And uh, I think it is, is, it is, a, is a massive benefit, uh, especially to James Horn and, the, and his management team. It's true that... Like if you add up all the hours, it actually counts out at about a couple of weeks you know, over the course of an entire year. It is, and you know, and you, look at if you were going from Tipperary to Dublin and, and you're doing that drive or whatever, your body isn't ready for, you know, that. It's the, the, the mental part of it as well. Um, again, no one's going to drive from Mayo and go to Crow Park and play a game. You know, you have to have rest and you have to have some sort of, of, of relaxation after a long drive like that. And uh, it is stressful, and there's traffic, and there's getting out of traffic, and it's it's just the fact that they're able to focus, fully focus, once they, they knock off work on uh, on, a, on, a, on a training evening or on a, on a match day. So several months after Mayo lost that All Ireland final to Dublin, they go ahead and beat the Dubs after a fairly disastrous first half. They look to be a nice bit off. Got that point just before half time, I think, from Conor Loftus that sort of pared back the deficit a little bit. Did you see, you know, what unfolded? Did you see that coming, or did you think it was going to be a repeat of the final with Dublin just keeping Mayo at arm's length? Um, I thought I wasn't too positive, now to be honest with you. Um, Saturday evening game, you know the crack yourself. You're trying to write an article or write a review of the game. But just the review I had written at half time, <laughs> it wasn't too positive, wasn't too complimentary. And uh, then as the game went on, I'm going, oh, geez, I better, this could, this could need to be rewritten. And all of a sudden, extra time, and I'm going, oh no. Uh, Sunday papers are ringing, go, where's your article? Um, but it, 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 it wasn't there in the first half. Um, and as we've seen, and I don't know what it is, that 70 minutes of continuous quality of football um, we haven't seen. Have we seen 70 minutes of continuous quality hurling? Probably, yes, from Limerick, from an All-Ireland start to finish. 
But I think um, a lot of teams are very kind of phased, and whether it's and it's definitely not meant because you you know you've never went out in a hurling pitch. I've never went out in a football pitch and went, okay, we just suck it up, don't want them to score a goal, sit back, no, let them have the ball. You know, it just it just didn't it didn't click. And I think honestly, that Conor Loftus point was a little bit of positivity going in. Now it wasn't as big a point as 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 um, uh, Niall Morgan's point uh, on. Uh, last weekend, um, but if you have that last score before half time, it gives you some little degree of confidence going into the dressing room. Um, you're kind of saying to yourself, "Well, thanks be to God, the, you know, the 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 finger wagging from the manager won't be as hard if you get the last point." And I think it just gave us it, it just settled us um, to say there's an opportunity, and you just work it down. You don't work it to get it within a point. You work it to get it. if you're five down, you get it to four, and from four, then we're only getting we get one more, and there's one score in it. And you just break it down from a, from a process point of view and it goes back to the first throw in, we have to win it. We have to start putting Dublin on the, on the back foot. What was your stomach like? What, was, what were you like when you were watching Dublin trying to, or sorry, Dublin trying to hold on to the ball, play keep ball, and you're looking at Mayo and I'm there thinking, press up more, 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 but they were patient. What was it like for you as an experience? It, it, was, it was frustrating because I had been in Crow Park at the kind of final, was it two weeks previous, and we were kind of the very same with Galway. Um, now, I know there's, there's, there's a certain, as I said, a certain element to say, oh, that's planned and everything else. Um, but, you know, we weren't, we weren't crisp. We weren't, we hadn't fluidity in our forwards. We hadn't that, we, we just, and, and it's, 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 it's real. We weren't on, on song and uh, it, is, it showed. Um, but you're still in with a chance. But uh, transformational, both halves were Connacht final and all Ireland semi. Um, have been transformational from my own perspective. And they completely then said, well, we have to. We have to go at it. And it wasn't throwing caution to the wind. It was nearly believing in themselves to say, you know, the likes of uh, Tommy Conroy has the ability to go forward and drive at players. Um, Lee Keegan, Paddy Durkin, you know, go Matthew Rowe and just going, you know, going at teams. And, um, and once, you go, once, you, once you sense a, 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 a bit of weakness, well, then you're going, well, you know what? Um, it is, it, is, it is phenomenal what momentum can do. And, and for me, the two defining moments of the championship so far this year has been Petey Hart's block the last day and Jim O'Connor's big toe. That's the truth. And you know what? You can go back and we see it from a distance as being in the stands. But a player can, can feeds off that and you know it, a big hit or a big challenge or a big score. Dealing with keeping that ball in, not letting it cross the line, created momentum to come out. McLaughlin, left foot, 40 yards out, over the bar. Just we're down to what? Five points now? Six. Next score, down to five, and then you go right. It's toe to toe. And that, it's them two, for me, them two defining moments have helped change the course of, of both games. Yeah. And then Shaw Bugler got the first point of extra time, but Mayo came back and, and took over. So... Will that extra time be the making of this Mayo team, or is there a little danger that they've the final played already, you know, psychologically? Ah, uh, no, because at the end of the day, they know that it's man says fifteen two was it two periods of ten. It's not worth the empty. It's not going to win you, win you in Ireland. Um, but them two periods of extra time can show them exactly. They can give them one massive degree of confidence. Um, two, they have kind of certainty to say, well, you know what. I think the likes of Tommy Conroy became a man that day. Um, you know, the Ryan O'Donoghue, he's gone, you know what, he's going to be a better footballer because of that period. Because you learn so much in it. And it's not if you score two points or you were, you were the best player on the pitch for the extra, extra time, you're going, right, I need to start the next day, the next way, in the same, in the same fashion. And, and the start is going to be very, very important from an Ireland context because Tyrone have started very positively in all their games. Is it the young lads that are bringing uh, Mayo on to the next level? Because we know there was six retirements over the winter, but you s still have the backbone of Lee Keegan. Uh, Dermot O'Connor's obviously been there for a number of years. A few other lads have experience for two or three years. Aidan didn't have his best day in O'Shea the last day out. But there's still plenty of experience, including Kevin McLaughlin there. So which, which is driving this, carry, or this Mayo team on? Um, they're driving each other, and, and, and that's not a, a simple answer. Um, no matter how long you're a player and I was a player for 12 years coming 
And then we had the introduction of the likes of young guys like Andy Moore to our team. Um, we, you know, that kind of young, youthful exuberance. Um, one makes you going, right, Jesus, there's a young fella coming in. Um, Tom Parsons were coming in my time. Um, I'm going, Jesus, I'm not going to let these young fellas know boss or dictates training. It kind of lifts you, but their attitude is like, and even now, if you look at the yin and the yang, the likes of Ushie Mullen and um, coming into the, the squad, the younger players, um, they have a bit of flair about them. They're, a bit, they're, they're themselves. And um, whether they're wearing pink boots, ponytails, one pink sock, one red sock, and baseball cap back the front, that's who they are. And that creates a, a little, it, it helps transgress and, and, and integrate a, a, a player that might be like, say, Aidan O'Shea, that's there for what now, 10, 10 years, 11 years at this stage nearly. And uh, you're kind of going, yeah, that's, that's, that's that kind of feed, they feed off each other. And again, you're getting to know players and you're trying to get them up. But again, if you have a high level of, of competitiveness at training, um, that's what really what, what, um, what gels a team. And I think the young guys, the, the experienced guys, as you mentioned, um, have, have, and again, by retirements. And look, at, let me tell you, if, if Mayo win this all Ireland, every player that's ever played for Mayo will get a medal in their own mind. The likes of David Clark comes to mind for me, Chris Barrett, um, the likes of Tom Parsons, the likes of Keith Higgins. Like, they're not necessarily going to get a physical medal. But by Jesus, you know, there will be, people might say, I oh, wouldn't it be nice. They, they deserve a medal. And everyone that played for the last 35 years or 70 years deserves a medal. And that, from, that emotional medal um, will be contextualized if, if, if we all cross the line. And like Aidan, obviously, as I said, he didn't have the greatest day the last day out. What do you expect from him? And would, do you think he'll be inside or out midfield? Because like, I think he might match up okay with that throw in midfield. Yeah, um, I, honestly, I think, this is, um, I think this is a match made in heaven for Aidan O'Shea. I honestly, honestly do. Um, he didn't have his greatest day. Um, no, he was carrying an injury into the game. And people are saying... Uh, Jesus, he wasn't great and fair play to her for taking him off and you know we're not a team of individual you sure man says everyone has a bad day but it's that it's that kind of that 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 chain of well it's only one link whoever comes on whether it's Ender Hessian coming on or, or James Carroll coming on well that's that's the next link that's going to strengthen it um, and I do think this is this is an ideal opportunity for Aiden um, given given the, the, this is Tyrone team would match up well five or six years ago. I don't know now um, would the likes of Ron and McNamee be ideally suited to, um, to Aiden. I think he can cause them an awful lot of hassle. And as you said there, Kennedy and um, uh, Kilpatrick um, had a good game, um, but you can alternate, especially with Morgan and the long kickouts. You can bring Aiden out. Um, and you can have him there as a as a target man when he's when he's in the full forward. But I think predominantly um, he will cause an awful lot of damage um, in the full forward line. Dublin have played Aiden very well, very very well, because they know him too well. This is a new challenge for Tyrone as such, and that challenge is being presented to them very early on in some of their careers. Um, will they be able to manage it as well? Because Dublin have has that opportunity and that one-to-one -one with Aidan Shea every year nearly for the last eight years and our Ireland's or semi-finals at some big stage. I think it'll, it'll present a, it'll, it'll definitely be um, for Fergal Logan and uh, Brian Doyle, they'll scratch their head. So you played against Throne in 2004, they were reigning All-Ireland champions. I think you hit a wide straight away and then you must have scored three points, you had a, you had a great day at the office. Did I hit a wide straight away? I think you hit a wide, yeah, I just looked at the Wouldn't be like me day. to hit three in a row though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like, yeah. you know what it's like to, try to face Tyrone and the ferocity. We probably saw signs of that against Kerry. So do you think Tyrone are, are, may or are going to be able for that ferocity? Um, and they need to be. And that is a key element of Tyrone's game. And always has been. But you're going, it's just the intensity, ferocity, as you said. And by Jesus, I've, I felt it in every game I ever played, especially 2004. Um, but you have to match it. You have to match that intensity. And Mayo have, without doubt, the capability of that. And again, I do think they have, they, have defined, they have defined their tackle over the years. And it's down to, uh, and to Donny Buckley as well, being a main instigator of the, how well and how controlled and how measured they tackle. But they tackle um, ferociously. 
and they tackle very intelligently. And again, from a Tyrone point of view, we, you know, touch tight football, you're going, I want your hand, I want your hand on them at all the time. From a Tyrone the last day, they were like octopuses. They were like all over the Curry players. They didn't give them an inch to breathe. They didn't let them settle. Uh, and that, that I, I think, Mayo, from... Sometimes you can, you, can, you can get carried away with that intensity. Sometimes uh, there will be times of the games that Mayo just need to control it and ask them out a little bit. Mayo are very good ballers. Hand, like their, hand, their hand ball, um, their ball handling um, is a, uh, ability is, is, is absolutely top class and I think they can, they can tease um, Tyrone out to a degree, but they can't. They can't in no circumstances, in any way, shape or form, take the ball into the tackle. So David, finally, in a word, are Mayo going to do it? Do you think they're going to do it? Yes. Right. I can't give you one word. I believe they have the capability, they have the potential, they have the players, they have the bench, they have the management. Um, hunger and everything else counts for a little bit, but it won't get you on Ireland. We know that from the past. But um, I firmly, firmly, firmly believe, honest to God now, that we will win it. And you've set it up very nicely. <laughs> That's it for uh, tonight's episode of All Ireland Series Live with Benetti's Menswear. If you want to get one of these retro jerseys, the Mayo, the, uh, the Toronto, or any of the other ones, please do like, share, comment, and use the hashtag Benetti's Menswear. That's it. Thanks very much. <laughs>